welcome to the Steve Kayla Show. This is episode two of our mini webisode series that we're doing whilst we're waiting for the podcast to get up and running. So this episode, I want to talk just briefly about mental health because it's something that's popped up a lot recently in the news uh, and it's something that I've had a lot of personal experience with as have a lot of my friends and family. So I just want to have a, just a brief conversation about it. When I was trying to do some research for the episode, I went to websites and sources like the World Health uh, Organization, uh, or I went, I looked at Gallup polls, and I tried to gather as much research as I could. Uh, what I'll do is, when we upload this episode, I'll pull that information on there so it's easily accessible to everyone. But there's certain things that stood out to me, and those were things like uh, one in four people will be diagnosed with depression. Uh, and in the UK, something in 2015, there were 6,639 suicides in the UK and Republic of Ireland. And things like this, they, they trouble me. Because what, what is mental health? I mean, I'm, I'm someone who has wrestled with it and grappled with it, and I don't really understand it either. I find uh, in those moments where I'm introverted, where I try and understand what's happening to me, where you can you panic and you stress that you you're losing your mind, or and you get angry sometimes because people don't understand you. And I think that's something I like to highlight in this episode. If you're someone who hasn't got mental health problems, then things like depression, uh, anxiety, certain dysmorphias, bipolar, whatever it is. They can be really difficult to fathom, and I do understand that. But there's a, I've noticed from when I struggle with depression myself that there's a, there's a huge, there's huge stress involved with trying to explain to your boss, your manager, why you can't come into work, because a lot of people have used depression and anxiety too quickly, and they've used it just to get time off work. And I mean, I'm. And it, which is a shame because it dilutes the seriousness of the thing for people who actually suffer from these. Now, depression, if someone comes to you and tells you that they're depressed or they're, they're feeling really, really anxious, it's easy, it's really, really easy to go, oh, come on, come on, you'll be fine, just don't think about it, or come on, get it together, get it together, or just say something useless like that in order to get them to work um, because I understand that you've got a business to run. But mental health is so, so delicate. Imagine, the best way I can sort of describe it is we, we have these sense organs. Uh, you know, we can touch things, smell things, taste things. But we, all of it goes through our brains and our brains process this information and it, it interprets reality for us. That's not something we have control over. So imagine if there's some hidden illness that's just completely knackering that up for you. That's making, for example, there were times where a friend would say to me, hey, there's a party on Friday. Uh, there'll be loads of people there. Do you want to come? And my friend's thinking uh, there'll be new people there. We can meet girls. They'll be, you know, make new friends, have a good time. But what I'm seeing in my head is just a, a kaleidoscope of paranoia and worry and judgmental faces and it's just it's irrational but that's all I have depression is something that I'd like to focus on here as well because depression is something we don't understand a lot of the time especially its causes I mean it's the the most common thing people say and doctors say about it is that it's a it's a chemical imbalance in the brain but there's a author an excellent author called Johan Hari who who's written a book called uh, lost connections and in that he talks about stuff that we don't consider when talking about depression and what makes us depressed and he says a lot of the time it's not a chemical imbalance even though that is a legitimate thing uh, that is why you need to take antidepressants and at no point will I advocate not taking antidepressants if that's what you need but he says he says a lot of the time there's uh, underlying symptoms of why we'd be miserable uh, people are miserable because they're in shit jobs that 
that don't do anything for them uh, because they've got terrible diets, they don't exercise, and all these things lead, they breed misery, and they breed miserable emotions, and they make out that seeps, and it seeps out, so that the rest of our life becomes miserable as a result. Then we get depressed. I've been there, I've been there, I was so depressed. My life was shit because I wasn't doing anything. So you get trapped in your own misery because eventually you get too miserable to get out of bed. Now I knew things had to change a few years ago when I saw my, when I thought that when you reach a point where you're sure that you wanna commit suicide, when it's not just a rush of adrenaline or when it's not a, you know, an angry, let's get this over with thing. I reached a point where I was numb to the point of, I'm okay, I've accepted the fact that I want to do this and I want to commit suicide. And it's only when I saw my father cry for the first time at the sort of state I was in that it registered me that, that I, need to, I need to sort this out, I need to fix every aspect of my life. So I took that into presence, which is what I recommend. But use that as a spine. Don't use that as the. Don't use that as the whole cure. Take that into presence, but make tiny incremental changes to your life to make things better. If there are toxic people in your life that are poisonous to your happiness, cut them out. You don't need them. If you're not exercising, you don't have to sign up for a gym. Although I do recommend that too. You can just go for a walk, put some headphones in, listen to some music or an audio book, and go for a stroll. Uh, eat slightly better than you are and just over the next few weeks just eat a little bit better cut sugar out sugar can make you crash and make you feel awful I'm not a doctor my advice would be if you're feeling depressed if you've been where I've been where you're so miserable that just existing is a pain or that you can't even move your muscles because because you've got no motivation to survive then then I'm sorry I'm sorry you dealing with that. I'm sorry that's something you have to experience. But just know that there's there's nothing that can't be solved. There's no mountain too high. It's not. It's something that you can accomplish all by yourself. All by yourself. You don't need anyone else, but other people can help you here. So so my advice is to is to talk to people. Tell people that you're struggling. Talk to your manager or boss if they don't understand calmly. Write down what you need to say and explain to them what anxiety and depression means to you and how it's affecting you. So, get yourself to the doctors. Get on some antidepressants, but also make the little changes that will make you feel better in your own life. Uh, and get help. Don't keep it to yourself. Uh, I hope some of that was helpful. I find that I can't be too impartial when it comes to a subject like this because it's something that, that affects, that has affected me. But uh, but I hope some of this advice was helpful. What I'll do is when we post a video up, I'll put a list of authors that have written excellent books on self-help and what, what depression means, what anxiety is. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see a whole playlist, uh, hopefully soon, about where you've got university professors and lecturers talking about depression and what we can do to combat it. And uh, I, I hope you find that helpful. And if you are depressed or anxious, then don't worry, you're not, you're not, there's nothing wrong with you, you're not faulty. It's just an illness. It's just an illness that other people can't see, so they're frightened of it. So uh, thank you for tuning in. I'm sorry this episode was heavier than usual, but uh, it's an important subject and uh, one that we should all address and think about. Thank you.